going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, man, back again. Hope you guys are doing well today. And I'm going to be showing you the ultimate guide that you can use to boost your FPS and lower your ping in Fortnite. Yes, I said it. It is possible. Now, we researched a ton of info for this video, going out there and looking at different methods and tweaks for making our games less laggy. There was a lot of bogus info. There really was. But we took what actually, you know, was working. We found it and we compiled them for you guys in this video. What should really work enough to reduce your ping, increase your frames, and have you ranking up faster than ever? Who is ready for this video? Speaking of ranking up, ProGuys.com is where you can find all the resources needed to quickly improve and begin dominating your games. Rank up faster, guys, and to start enjoying the game more than ever by checking out ProGuys today. Link is in the description. Also, this week, we're going to be running a giveaway for a free VOD review from a real pro player. That's right, guys. Your chance to get one-on-one -on -one live advice from the pros for free? It is crazy. All right, to enter this, listen up. Head on over to our community Discord and check out the YouTube Giveaways channel. To enter the giveaway, all you got to do is make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, sign up for ProGuides.com as a free user, and react to the party hat emoji that the bot posted on Discord. For more details, check out the Discord link in the description. All right, guys, bunch of crunch on me. It's about that time. Where you at? It's time to sit back. Come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Say with me. It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. So, before we start, anytime you mess with your PC, it's a good safety measure to create a restore point in case that you want to revert the changes, right? To do that, simply open the start menu and search create a restore point. On this window that pops up, click create, give your restore point a name, and then click create again. So, should anything go wrong, you can just now come back to this window, click system restore, and revert your PC back to this point in time. But now, let's start by looking at what in-game settings we need to tweak. You guys ready? Yo, let's go. We're gonna be looking at PC settings since, you know, they have the most options, but you guys on console and mobile can also follow along and apply what's ever available, all right? First off, resolution. We recommend keeping it full screen at your monitor's native res. So 720p, 1080p, or 1440p for the most. What you can do for an FPS boost is change your 3D resolution, which can help hugely on mobile and even on PCs that lack dedicated graphics such as laptops. Slide that down as much as you want, but 25% looks pretty ugly, so the sweet spot is typically between 50 and 75%. Under graphic settings, set shadows, anti aliasing, effects, and post-processing to low. View distance can give you a slight competitive advantage on epic quality at the expense of some FPS, but set it to low if you want as many frames as possible. And for textures, some users report that putting this on epic can really help with shuttering issues, but if you're on an older PC or a laptop, I set this to low too. And by the way, it's not a setting now, but we should be getting a new NVIDIA reflex setting soon. If you're watching from the future and you see this available to you, just turn it on. As for for advanced graphics, set V-Sync off, motion blur off, this new high rex texture setting to off, show FPS on, multi-threaded rendering to on, and GPU crash debugging off. For your DirectX version, DX12 can give you smoother gameplay after a game or two of using it, but it leads to a lot of crashes for some reason. So we definitely recommend DX11, but feel free to try DX12 and just see how stable your game feels. Under the game tab, scroll down and turn off NVIDIA highlights. And if you're on a slower device, set all three record play options at the bottom to off. Under audio settings, make sure visualized sound effects is off. And again, if you're on a slower device, setting sound quality to low can help boost performance. So after tweaking your game settings, you can close your game. But another thing that we really need to do is make sure all unnecessary programs and apps are closed. So to do this, go to your desktop, expand your system tray at the bottom right, and right click to close any unneeded programs. Once you need them again, you can just run them at a later time. Next up, let's disable some programs on startup through task manager by pressing control shift and escape at the same time. Click the startup tab, right click and disable every program you don't immediately need when you boot your computer. Really all that should be left is the bare minimum. 
your antivirus and whatever else is required for your computer to function, all right? And closing programs also apply to consoles and mobile. You wanna close every app and leave parties that aren't being used as those can interfere with game performance. Next up, we need to turn off the Xbox Game Bar by searching Enable Xbox Bar game bar and windows on the left go to the game mode tab and make sure this one's on close this window once you're done for even more performance we can adjust the way our windows looks to use fewer resources to do this search this pc but instead of clicking on it right click in the start menu and select properties on this window click on advanced system settings on the left then click the settings button under performance and here select adjust for best performance and press apply if you don't like the look of things now you can always return to the default of letting windows choose but for those of you on weaker pcs this setting can really help squeeze a few more frames in all right so close that out once done and next search choose a power plan in windows here and i mean like right here switch to the high performance setting this can really help with stuttering on certain devices and lead to smoother gameplay not always but in a few circumstances it works another optimization tip is to disable full screen optimizations on the fortnite executable as some players report it leading to better performance so to do this hold the windows key and press r and type percent program files percent click on the epic games folder if you can't find this folder it might mean your fortnite is installed on another drive so click back to this pc at the top and search through the program files of any other drives you have but for most of us it'll be there so from epic games click fortnite fortnite game binaries win 64 then scroll down till you see fortnite client dash win 64 dash shipping right click that and just go to properties click compatibility then disable full screen optimizations and press ok while this helps with certain performance issues it can lead to longer alt tabbing so if that bothers you you can always turn that off by following the same steps lastly there's a program that some say reduces their input lag and shuttering called the intelligent standby list cleaner or islc to get it follow the link in the description scroll down and click official download here you can right click the download once it's done to click show and folder and here run it to extract it to another folder but before you proceed, my friends, we first need to change a few timer settings in Windows. So to do that, search Command Prompt in Windows, right click and run it as administrator. Okay, so in here, type BCD EDIT backslash delete value, use platform clock and press enter. Next, enter in BCD EDIT backslash set, use platform tick, yes. And finally for laptops, BCD EDIT backslash set, disable dynamic tick, yes. Once you've got all these in, give your PC a restart, then go back to the ISLC folder you extracted and just run the application. You're gonna be met with a bunch of numbers and weird looking things, but we only need to do a few steps here. First, look at the top left to see your total system memory. Take around half that number and put it in the free memory as lower than box. So if you have 16,000 megabytes of RAM, you put in roughly 8,000. All right, so next on the right side, enter exactly 0 0.50 for your wanted timer resolution. Delete any extra zeros in there then click enable customer timer resolution for the polling rate set that to 1000 ms then click start and minimize the program do this every time before you run fortnite and you should see less input lag higher frames and fewer stutters but when you're done playing fortnite it's recommended you open the program again through your system tray and click stop okay so now that's it for the fps optimizations let's move into lowering our pain here we go but before we do a reminder that most of our pro guys coaches have experienced experience playing on high ping and playing on high ping isn't actually all that bad if you have the right play style so to learn the gameplay secrets of high ping and to start winning more games you should drop by our side and speak with a coach today so Ping is largely based on where you live relative to the Fortnite servers. And truthfully, there's really no way to just magically get zero ping, despite, you know, what clickbait videos you've seen on YouTube. That being said, though, there are a few tweaks that we can do, which may help lower a small bit and make your connection more stable. All right. First one being the most important one of all, using an Ethernet cable. Being on wireless should always be a last resort. 
Even if it's a pain to route an ethernet cable through your house, trust me, the results are worth it. You're gonna have the best and most consistent connection possible as opposed to always getting ping spikes on Wi-Fi. But if for some reason routing an ethernet cable just isn't an option for you, you can always just look to either setting up a Mocha or a power line adapter. As for what ethernet cable to use, Cat5e should work just fine, but Cat6 is also pretty cheap nowadays and really can help you just shield against interference. So get one of those if you see it at a, at a good price. But regardless of which to go with, make sure you first measure the distance from your setup to your router so you don't end up buying a cable that's way too long. The second way that you can get better ping on Fortnite is by solving routing issues. For many of us, the problem with high ping really isn't that, you know, we live in a remote location. Instead, our ping is really high due to our internet service providers inefficient routing. They take a weird path to connect us to Fortnite and so our ping suffers. But lucky for us, there are a couple of ways that we can fix these issues, all right? First, it's Epic's official method where you run a tracer route to the Fortnite servers, then contact your ISP with the tracer route results to see if they can identify and solve the problem. There's really no guarantee that they're gonna find an issue or even fix it if there is one, but either way, the steps aren't really too tricky. Just, you know, just a little time consuming. So we'll leave a link in the description to Epic support article that shows you exactly what to do. All right, guys, so the other option that you have, which sadly only works for PCs, uses a third-party routing service such as Haste or Exit Lag. These programs work by routing you through one of their networks, then sending your connection directly to the Fortnite servers. So in specific cases of lousy routing, they can result in huge ping drops. We're talking like going from 70 ping down to 30 in some cases, okay? Now, from what we have experienced, both of these options are really good. Exit lag has a free trial, then costs a few bucks a month, whereas Haze is totally free if you want. So check out one or both of these options and just see, you know, like which helps you the best. Lastly, for those of us on PC, we can tweak a few window settings so that our internet bandwidth isn't being used as often while we're gaming, which can help those with slower connections. All right, so start by searching allow downloads from other PCs and Windows and simply just turn it off or just set it to only PCs on my local network. Then click on advanced options and here, and I mean like right here, set either an absolute bandwidth cap on downloads or use a percentage setting. Turning on both limits and settings a low percentage of anywhere from 25 to 40% to free up some bandwidth. Once you're done guys, close that page and search settings and the start menu. Click on privacy and basically, we wanna turn off everything we don't need. Start with the speech tab, turning off online voice recognition, then click inking and typing personalization and turn this getting to know you setting off as well. After that, click diagnostics and feedback and just, you know, make sure you're only sending the required diagnostic data. Over here, all right, you can also turn off the other settings like improved inking and typing and tailored experiences. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. That is it for the tweaks. You know, hope this video really helped. The most recent Fortnite update caused many issues, even for those on really high-end PCs. So if you did everything and you're still getting stutters, honestly, don't beat yourself up because it's just probably the game's fault anyway. But if you did benefit from all these tweaks, yo, hit those like and subscribe buttons would be highly appreciated. And while you're at it, Leave a comment telling us, you know, how big of a, an improvement that you saw in both your frames and ping, all right? All right, that's all for me. And uh, keep eating that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going.